What drives the success? From 12 great cities around the globe, this is One Day in Seoul. Seoul is the quintessential megacity, a gargantuan concrete jungle whose population quadrupled in just three decades. A city whose citizens are said to work more hours in a year than any other in the world. The South Korean capital has transformed itself from the desolate poverty that followed the Korean War of the 1950s to the high-tech prosperity it enjoys today. This is one day in one of the fastest growing, most pioneering cities in the world. If this city is known for hard work, there can be few that work quite so hard as those who run the Norianjin fish market. It's almost 6 a.m. and the sun has been up for less than an hour in Seoul. But the auctioneers here have been at it since one in the morning. My name is Cho Sung Hoon. I've been working here for about 30 years. I work as an auctioneer. Norianjin Fish Market is the biggest wholesale fish market, not just in Korea, but in all of Asia. Operating 24 hours of every day, this enormous market is as big as 10 soccer pitches. Koreans eat three times more fish than the world average, which makes this big business. Each day we do anywhere between 10 and 15 million won of business. That's about 1.3 million dollars. The fish here isn't just consumed by the 10 million people of Seoul, but by people from all over via markets in places like Chungcheong province, Daegu and Daejeon. For Cho Sung Hoon, there's a lot more to his home city than first meets the eye. At first glance, Seoul might feel bleak, like a cement forest, but the city is surrounded by mountains. So if you're aware of these, Seoul is a beautiful city. The youngest part of this sprawling metropolis lies to the south of the magnificent Han River. Here on the river's southern banks sits Yoido Fu Gospel Church, home to the largest Christian congregation in the world. It's 9.15, and with just over an hour to go before the first service of the day, choir leader Kim yeon ja joins the 120-strong choir already in full voice. Kim yeon ja is my name. I'm the head of the choir here at Yoido Fu Gospel Church. Our choir has been running for 31 years, and I've been a member for 28 of those. Today we're here for the first Wednesday service at 10.30. I've been attending church ever since I was a child, but didn't truly understand faith until I came to Yoido. Until it was partitioned in 1953, Korea was a Buddhist country with just a small Christian presence. Most were based in the north. 
When the country divided, those Christians fled south, escaping the new communist regime. Many got appointed to high office in the south and relished the freedom to promote their faith. Today, around a third of South Korea's population is Christian. One in every 10 is baptized here at Yoido. It currently has more than three quarters of a million members. The sheer size of this church means it's the driving force of Christianity, not only in Seoul, but all of Korea. The pastors prepare for today's congregation, 15,000 of the faithful. The choir makes its way to the stage and the TV cameras get ready to broadcast the service to an international audience in countries as diverse as the USA, Spain and Uzbekistan. The church raises billions of dollars every year from its tithe. Each member is expected to give 10% of his or her income to the cause. These billions are spent on overseas missions in 60 nations, education and social programs in Korea, and generally spreading the word. South Korea's leap from developing to developed country is legendary. Known as the miracle on the Han River, the country's economy grew in leaps and bounds between the 60s and the 90s. Fueled by a focus on education and rapid industrialization, average incomes rose from just 100 to $10,000 in those 30 years. Today, the average salary in the city is $40,000. As the capital city, Seoul was the driving force behind that growth. Today, it generates almost a quarter of the country's economy. The heart of the city's business lies in technology and innovation. Here at the Korean Institute of Science and Technology, some of the country's best scientific minds are involved in developing cutting-edge intelligent robots. Breakfast is ready. Wake up. Wake up. My name is Moon Sang Kim. I'm working at the uh, Korea Institute of Science and Technology. I'm uh, director of Center for Intelligent Robotics. Dr. Kim is father to a brood of high-tech, multi-talented robotic children. The center is tasked with the creation of robots which will help advance the economy and aid social development. Part of the $80 million budget has been used to develop this little guy. Are you ready to study? Let's start. This is Inky, an English teacher in robot form, the perfect marriage of Korean technology and the country's other obsession, education. School. School. Government investment in education, and specifically English teaching, has been the key to the country's economic growth. But it's a complex and costly business, which is why innovations like Inki are a top priority here. Join repeat after me. It, it is very interesting to use Inki for English teaching purpose because Korean students are very shy, actually. They haven't had uh, enough experience to interact with native speakers. So it is very easy for them to interact with the robot system. It's still at the experimental stage, but Inki could well be taking the register in Seoul schools within a year something the children think is a great plan. For Dr. Kim, the dynamism of his home city is crucial to the achievements made here. I think um, the most experienced and the best the engineers get together in Seoul. It means that it is very fast to make something new in Seoul. Kimchi! Kimchi! Cheese! <laughs> A day in Seoul is crowded, fast-moving, but hyper-modern. But amongst the skyscrapers, tradition remains. 
with plenty evidence of the royal dynasties of old. In the old part of town, life moves just a little more slowly. This is Jomyo Park, where every afternoon gentlemen of a certain age gather to play traditional board games. I'm 79 years old. My name is Kim Sun Shik. I come here about three times a week. Today is my day to come and play Jangi. In the late 1950s, the average life expectancy of a South Korean was just 52. Today, Solites can expect to live until they're 80. Kim Sun Shik and his friends have seen the city change enormously during their lives. I was born and raised in Seoul. Saying you were a Solite used to mean that you were from within the four gates of the city. But a lot has changed. Today, the mountains are not as tall as they used to be because of all the skyscrapers and tall buildings. Now, Korea is no longer a poor country. People are dressed better and they're able to eat three meals a day. Now, we are part of the developed world. Join us after the break for a glimpse into the world of Seoul's most unusual sporting heroes. Sponsored by City. City turns 200 this year. In that time, there have been some good days and some difficult ones. But through it all, we've persevered, supporting some of the biggest ideas in modern history. So why should our anniversary matter to you? Because for 200 years, we've been helping ideas move from ambition to achievement. And the next great idea could be yours. City. Heroin in Karachi is often cheaper than food. With exclusive access, we'll be speaking to addicts and those who are trying to turn their lives around by locking them up and forcing them to go cold turkey. one day in the South Korean capital of Seoul. A city which has advanced and developed as no other before it. Seoul is the most technologically connected city in the world. With super fast broadband in almost every home, mobile technology recently updated to 4G, and the latest trend, shopping at the subway station. Scan the barcode on the virtual image, and the supermarket will deliver your groceries to your home. This is a city that has already arrived in the future. It's 2.30 
and these young professional sportsmen are on their way to a big game. Team KT Rolster are athletes of a different stripe. They're here to compete in electronic or esports, which in 10 years has come to rival soccer as a national spectator sport. Two channels broadcast the competitions around the clock. My name is Lee Ji Hoon, and I'm the head coach of KT Rolster. There's worldwide interest in Korea's esports, and the reason Seoul has teams like KT, SK, T1, and CJ is strong sponsorship. It's enabled the sport to really establish itself as part of Korean culture. This esports stadium is one of many in the city where spectators can watch the gaming idols play computer games head to head. The player's celebrity cannot be underestimated. Top players are afforded real star status. Katie Rolster is set to be the Real Madrid of the eSports League. Sponsorship deals and television coverage have brought large sums of money to the sport and many of these young teenage gamers earn hundreds of thousands of dollars. Today, the team meet arch-rivals Woonjin to play StarCraft, a military strategy game in which players fight to win territory in the Milky Way. The game has sold 9.5 million copies worldwide, four and a half million of those in Korea alone. The team live together and practice for up to 10 hours every day. <laughs> First in the booth is 19-year-old Cho song Wook. I lost too easily. I prepared hard, but it all ended too soon, and it doesn't feel good. And it's going from bad to worse, as the second player blows it too. We're not having much luck today. We've lost both games. I'm not too concerned yet. We can still win the second half. The team must win this next game to stay in the tournament. So the pressure is on the next player, Kim Sung Bai. It's a win, which keeps the team in the tournament, for now. Tide's turning in our favour. I'm hopeful. But coach Lee's hope is short-lived. Our boys lose the next game, and the opposition comes out on top. KT Rolster go home this time with nothing. But that doesn't deter their loyal fans. KT! It's 3.45 in the afternoon and time for tea. In fast-moving modern cultures, forgotten traditions often return. And in Seoul, the tea ceremony of old is doing just that. My name is Yoon Suyun, and I work here at Suyun Sangbang Tea House. The tea house is popular with young Seoulites, keen to unwind the old-fashioned way. The people of Seoul come to this tea house for a little bit of Korean tradition and to escape their busy modern lives. Young people can come here to learn about the traditions and for older folk, it's a place where they can reminisce. Since I began working here, I've become really proud of this place. I feel I'm taking part in spreading traditional Korean culture. It's 5.30 and rush hour in Seoul. 
As in every other megacity, the roads are filling up with cars and buses. Seoul's rapid growth brought with it immense environmental problems. In the last decade of the 20th century, economic growth was the number one priority for South Korea. Today, though, the government has decreed all growth must be green. Seoul's many green initiatives have made it one of the world's best examples of progressive urban development. They've radically cut CO2 emissions and power consumption, increased green spaces by planting thousands of trees, and have even encouraged the planting of food crops in urban spaces. One of Seoul's leading environmental consultants is taking us to a rather special place in the city, in a rather special bus. My name is Ok Jung, a senior program manager at Global Green Growth Institute. You know, Seoul is not like London or Paris. Seoul has been reconstructed from the ashes of the Korean War. People say that Korea has experienced the compressed growth of centuries in a generation. One of the city's most recent green initiatives is the world's first commercial battery-powered bus. I love this city. And dynamic and full of opportunity and full of adventures and achievement. For now, this bus is one of a small fleet of just 11. But by 2020, these distinctive vehicles will make up 50% of the city's fleet. Dr. Xiong has brought us to Chongichong Street, perhaps the most striking illustration of Seoul's green ambitions and a popular meeting place for Seoulites at dusk. 10 years ago, this now popular urban oasis looked like this. This place is for all of our citizens, city residents and uh, the tourists. At a cost of $350 million, this ambitious urban regeneration project saw the elevated highway torn down and the stream, which had been under concrete since the 1960s, allowed to flow freely once again. This Chongyecheon project, first of all, affected the social life and the cultural life of citizens, especially for those who are working in this business area. Because of the stream, the temperature in the immediate vicinity dropped, and the new ecosystem proved attractive to more than just the human population. Fish, birds, and insect numbers have all increased. Rapid urbanization is taking its toll on the planet, and Seoul's green endeavors mean it's fast becoming a blueprint for successful growth for cities the world over. As night falls over this new urban space, this forward-thinking city moves from work to play. In their training room, Team KT Rolster play to fight another day. The fish market workers make ready for another night shift. And the traffic, it seems, never stops. This has been one day in Seoul. City, 200 years of supporting the world's great cities. Where pandas live, real China, Chengdu. thousand comics in our home. There's nowhere in this house where there's no Star Wars. Now might be the time to sell. We yeah. just need more space. This 
just about new doors, new life. You know, no one says you can't collect anymore. Okay. The goal is for you to live in your house with your beautiful collection, but for there to be room. Collection Intervention. Series premiere tomorrow at 10. Only on Slice. The diner looked how it smelled. The walls, the color of the cleaning agent that fought for supremacy with the bacon seeking permanent residency on the stained stainless steel grill. Musk, cheap perfume, synthetics that sat alongside the pockmarked countertop, the plastic flower arrangement said it all, even if it gave off no scent. AMI TV, with described video, we make media accessible to everyone. Romero jersey, check. Ball glove, check. Ticket, check. I'm not a big league star, but on Saturdays, I get the big league treatment. See, today is my day. Today, I'm a Blue Jay, and the Rogers Center is my house. Junior Jay Saturday, get your tickets now at BlueJays.com and catch all your games on Sportsnet. I have decided to make this journey to South Africa because that's where the nearest pain of um, called injury rehabilitation centre can be found. So how did you come to be in a wheelchair? But I'm a victim of crime. Victim of crime in that uh, I was involved in carjacking. We are raising money to construct a rehabilitation and trauma centre for people with spinal cord injuries. We do not have one in the country. We do not have one in East and Central Africa. And the nearest place actually is South Africa.